The Lord be with you. Well, good morning and welcome on today, the sixth Sunday of Easter. And I have to say, it is perishing out here. It is dry for the moment, but we've had all sorts of weather this week. We've had rain, we've had hail, we've had gales, and we've had some lovely sunshine. Today, we've not got the lovely sunshine, and it is freezing. Still, it's only May, plenty of time yet, maybe. If you would like to follow our Bible readings in your own Bibles today, they are from the Acts of the Apostles, Psalm 98, 1 John 5, and John's Gospel, chapter 15. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize God's presence with us now. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. Almighty God, to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore examine ourselves and rejoice by putting away all malice and evil, and confessing our sins. Most merciful God, we confess to you, before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. The Collect for today. God our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter, were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptised with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptised in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His own right hand and his holy arm have won for him the victory. The Lord has made known his salvation. His deliverance has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and faithfulness towards the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sound praises to the Lord, all the earth. Break into singing and make music. Make music to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the voice of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sound praises before the Lord, the King. Let the sea thunder and all that fills it, the world and all that dwell upon it. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the, ring, the hills ring out together before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from John's first letter. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. 
By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by the water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Well, there's so much going on in today's readings, isn't there? But what really stands out for me is the continued message from last week's readings. Love. God's unconditional love for us and his command to us to love one another. Peter tells us that in the reading from Acts, Jesus is Lord for all. His love is for all. The psalmist reminds us to rejoice in God's faithfulness, that as he's been faithful to us in the past, he'll be faithful to us in the future. In John's letter, we are told that the love of God is to obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. But we find a significant message in verse 16 of John's Gospel, when Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Now, the Gospel reading today is a continuation of the conversation about vines and branches of last week. The branches draw their sustenance from their connection to the live vine. Believers draw their spiritual sustenance from their connection to Jesus, in whom they are called to abide, by abiding in the love of God that is mediated to us through Christ. We are called upon to love, and therefore share in that joy which comes from Jesus. Now, there's a strong sense of mutuality present in this discourse. As Jesus says to his disciples, you're no longer servants, you're friends. Now, this is a very different status. It's one of equality, and according to John, Jesus is lifting his disciples, and us, to such a status. But it's important to remember that this status is not one that we can aspire to. We can't work our way into that position. No, it's a matter of choice made by Jesus. And this is a key message throughout Scripture. God called Abraham, Moses, and David. God sent Abraham to a strange land so that a people might be formed. Moses was chosen by God to redeem Israel from bondage. God chose David to form a kingdom, despite his youth and lowly position. And there was nothing about these, these three persons that made them stand out. But God made that choice. You did not choose me, but I chose you. The same is true of the disciples and us. Now we probably make too much of their apparent lack of distinction, but nonetheless it is Jesus who chooses who will be his companions. As a result, Jesus is going to share everything given to him by his Father with them. In other words, they have become the heirs of Jesus, 
and thus heirs of God. So too, we have been chosen to be his friends, and not just friends, but members of his family. As such, we're privy to divine conversations. Jesus has chosen to share his love with us, for we are the recipients of divine love. Now, when we read a passage like this, it's appropriate to ask whether or not we too are included in this community of friends of Jesus. If we can see ourselves in this position, then we can see ourselves as being recipients of the love that is God. The power of this love is defined in sacrificial terms, as Jesus declares to his disciples, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. So we have been chosen by Jesus to be his friends and his continuing presence in the world. All we can do, as the theologian Karl Barth suggests, is, as the beloved of God, we have no alternative but to love him in return. In the dawning splendour of his glory, we have no alternative but to hope. Now, having been chosen out of love as friends, or children of Christ, and of God, there is the expectation that we will bear fruit. After all, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. The Father is the vine dresser who prunes the vines to make sure they're productive, as we heard last week in John 15. Therefore, having been chosen out of love to be the friends of God, and thus members of the family, we should bear fruit. And the fruit we're commanded to bear is fruit that will last. So could this be why Jesus has chosen us as his friends, that he might share with us the vision of God, which is rooted and grounded in love. If he has chosen us to receive the vision, then there's the expectation that we will act accordingly. That is, the love that has been shared with us, we are to share with others. As it is said by the author of 1 John, we love because he first loved us. So the core of the Christian message is love. God loves me. So how is it to sit with this reality? If we could really grasp God's unconditional love for us, life would be radically a journey of joy. To accept that God loves me is to accept the reality that God loves all others the same way. I am called to love myself and others. And it is clear from the Gospel that I am called to love the poor, the excluded, the marginalised, in a special way. I'm also called to care for the earth, described by Pope Francis as our common home with which God has entrusted us. God, who calls us to generous commitment and to give him our all, offers us the light and strength needed to continue on our way. In the heart of this world, the Lord of life, who loves us so much, is always present. He does not abandon us. He does not leave us alone, for he has united himself definitively to us, to our earth, and his love constantly impels us to find new ways forward. Now, my love for others must not be conditioned by how they respond. Jesus loves me totally and unconditionally, whether I'm good or bad or indifferent. My love must have that quality too. Now, this is costly love. It could demand my very life. This costly love will bear rich fruit, whether I see it or not. Just so, Jesus' love bears fruit only after his death. And we must not be discouraged when our love seems to be wasted. True love never comes to an end we read in Corinthians. Loving actions are the building blocks of eternal life. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Amen. And now let us hear from some people what it means to really love your neighbour. To love your neighbour as yourself is such, actually, um, an extremely high calling. Uh, the one person who demonstrated this to us more than anyone else is Jesus. He actually showed us what it, like, it looks like to love your neighbour as yourself. It's to give up who you are on behalf of other people. I don't think it necessarily means love yourself first, but I think unless we recognise that we are made in the image of God and that each one is precious to God and someone for whom the Lord Jesus died, um, then I think we need to be more selfless, more caring. We have to love everyone regardless of race or culture or gender. Being able to live at a space of awareness, of sensitivity, that tells us the truth of that unity is what it means to love our neighbours ourselves, because we are one and we are one in Christ. This is what. Uh, our religion reveals to us. When it comes to loving my neighbour and putting them first, it's not easy, but it is God's command. And you find that when you follow God's commands, he blesses you for how you treat your neighbour. If I can call
quote the, the parable of the Good Samaritan. That is, for me, the way to love my neighbour. I think it's to show the, the way that you would like to be treated. God was building a world where if we all let go of looking after ourselves, but we're all looking after each other, that is a better place to be. It's a better place, it's a better community. You can serve God by serving another person. You can't, you can't love God without that being put into practice by loving other people. Very recently it's shown for me that um, everything else in life isn't important, as in the materialistic things, and that only love at the end of the day and love for God will help you through. Thy kingdom come, Lord teach us how to pray for all to know your joy, your peace and love and know your friendship each and every day the breath of Christ the Father's gentle God in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing.
Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us intercede for others as we pray. Faithful God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us a new commandment to love one another in the same way that you love us. We ask you to teach us how to love you and our neighbours and recognise that by serving them, we are also serving you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for your Church, which gathers to praise you and to hear your Holy Word. We pray for our Christian sisters and brothers worshipping around the world, in all places, rural and town churches, great city cathedrals, and on the internet. We ask for your protection for all those persecuted as a result of their Christian faith, and to bless our leaders whose preaching and teaching inspire us with the message of your salvation. We ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on the congregations to give us a renewed vision of your purpose for us locally and into the wider world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, the world so often seems to be a violent and fearful place. Give us the strength to love our enemies and to pray for those who, by violence and acts of terrorism, distort and demonise your wonderful creation. We pray for our government and world leaders. Give to each of your children spiritual wisdom and insight that we might grow in our knowledge of you and your ways. Extend this grace to our political leaders knowing that only by your wisdom can they make decisions that are right and beneficial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for all those who help our local community to run smoothly because of their jobs, voluntary work or neighbourliness. Help us to be supportive and encouraging and to step into situations where we can serve. Bless our neighbours and strengthen those who are working in your name in order to bring healing and comfort to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us all to be a part of the healing ministry of your church. Encourage us to constantly pray for those we know who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, particularly those affected by the COVID pandemic. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, your love reaches beyond the grave. At the end of our days on earth, be with us and with those we love, and also with those whom we love and have gone before us. We pray for those who have died recently at this time of year. Give to the departed the perfect joy of your eternal love, and to those bereaved by their passing, the consolation of your perfect love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, send us out into the world today, mindful that as witnesses and servants, we should make you known in every place we visit, and bear witness to the gospel with acts of faith and hope and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us pray with confidence the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever, forever and ever, ever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope. 
who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the risen Lord bless us. May he watch over us and renew us as he renews the whole of creation. May our hearts and lives echo his love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Well, that concludes our short service of morning worship from today, the sixth Sunday of Easter, and I hope it's been of some comfort to you. Our church is open again, of course, and uh, we take all precautions to ensure safety. Uh, we have sanitising, distancing and all other measures, and it's uh, working out quite effectively. So if you feel like you'd like to join us, then come along for our Sunday service of Holy Communion, 9.15 each Sunday here in Hawthorne. Well, we'd love to see you. And meanwhile, if you'd like to continue supporting us in any other way, uh, you can make donations at our uh, website, hawthorngive.co.uk. If you'd like to take part in this service by doing one of the readings or the intercessions, then please drop us an email and we will make the necessary arrangements. And it'll be lovely, the more the merrier. We have different faces each time, as I'm sure you've noticed. And I would like to thank all those who have taken part in today's service. And I'd like to thank most of all you for being with us. I look forward to being with you again next week. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>